Okay, in the hoop house. Uh, yeah, we've made some more changes. Um, mid lighters out. Aquaponics back in. Um, we wanted to try a a bucket system in the in here, and uh, we're designing it after the Dutch bucket system used in hydroponics. Um, couldn't find a lot of information on how to do it aquaponically, but um, I modeled it after a couple of really good YouTube channels. Uh, MHP Gardener has a lot of good things going on in the buckets. Grew some amazing tomatoes. Also, uh, Brock Hughes has a channel where he's got a lot of um, hydroponic um, bucket system going and uh, a lot of good information there. Also, aquaponics on his channel. And um, this bucket system, come on down here. We start with a 100 gallon, a 100 gallon. Uh, bead trough, I guess you call it, <laughs> uh, fish tank. And oh, the water's cold. And we put it in the ground just to um, go with the gravity feed so we could gravity feed back. Um, we've, we've just got a, you know, a regular old 400 gallon per hour fish tank pump, just like we have in our other system, our deep water system, and it's it's pumping fine. I timed it out, and it's uh, we're, we're turning this tank over 100 gallons every half hour, so every 30 minutes we're cycling the water. Um, what we're doing is pumping out of there, coming up into this half inch tubing. It splits off three ways, goes to each line. Put a shut off on there so we could shut one run off, two runs off, whatever we need to do. It's always good to have some way to stop things up. Um, the buckets, just a four gallon bucket. You can go anywhere from a, a two gallon to a five gallon. We used a, we used a, a four gallon bucket because I got them free, and that's a great thing about it. Um, originally, we had these. Quarter inch. Oh, okay. Well, we put these barbs in, and they'll give you. They'll sell you a tool. He gave me a tool, which was really nice of him at Wormsway. But it, you really need that tool to punch these holes in here, just to get a nice clean punch and, and a good insert on that barb. Are you going to have problems? First time I did it, I just fudged it up and had leaks all over the place. So I got the tool and. Uh, Punched in the barbs, put a quarter inch line in. Originally we had these lines just uh, just over the top. And we were sticking them in the rock, weighing them down. And uh, they were popping out and the water was pumping out all over the ground and we were losing all our water in that tank. And we were refilling the water. So, uh, yeah, you see some rubber bands on there. I did a temporary fix with the rubber band just to hold them in place, but rubber bands aren't going to work. They'll just deteriorate. Pop. I drilled a quarter inch hole in there for the quarter inch tube. And it's it's snug. Now you can see the flow. I'll show you the flow right now. So, we're going constant flow. It's nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. So now we're, we're, we're secure on that. All right, down here at the end of the inlet line, uh, they sell caps that go on these, but uh, the guy at the store kind of convinced me that that was just kind of a waste. I mean, they're just a buck or something, like a buck twenty-five each. Would have been really cheap just to cap three of them, but he told me just do a double bend and put a twi put a, a zip tie on the end, and you'll be fine. So so far so good. I mean, kind of like the clean look of the cap, but. Eh. You know, maybe in the future I'll cap it, maybe not. I capped the end of the uh, one and a half inch, but I didn't glue it on. So we can, you know, we could shoot a hose through there if we need to spray that out, get any kind of gunk going on in there, any kind of clogs. A couple of the things that I'm concerned about is um, maybe some of the uh, solids from the fish 
wastes going into these quarter inch lines. If they clog, you know, they're so small they could clog rather easily. But I don't know. It's, it's an experiment. So we're going to see how it works out. So uh, we went with River Rock. A um, lot of choices in there. Um, Perlite, expensive. Uh, $25 bag would fill about seven buckets. Lava Rock, same thing. I did two buckets of lava rock just as an experiment because there's so much, so many holes and so many places for uh, nutrients to get in and to so much surface area on these little rocks. So sixty dollars a load on that would have been pretty expensive. These were, I think, twelve, fifteen dollars for a load. That was twenty five. Twenty five dollars a load. It was a lot of rock. And it's heavy. It's really heavy. But what we found out is. Uh, the rock gets really hot in the summertime, so you know, brainstorming that out, we thought, well, that will be great in the winter time because we'll have all this um, all this rock heating up and heating our water when the temperatures start dropping. But for now, uh, we were heating it. the rock was heating up and heating the water. We went probably 110, 115 degrees in the water temperature, and uh, yeah, we didn't. Good thing we didn't have any fish in there. We'd be boiling, having a fish boil. So uh, our solution was to throw a shade cloth over the top, and uh, I'll, I'll bring a video on that. That's that was really easy installation. Um, I'll show you that later. Anyway, went with the rock. Um, now the inside in the bucket. Well, let me get one. So inside the bucket, first thing I did was drill a hole. Um, I think it was a half inch, and I put a rubber bushing on here, which you can see right here. And uh, we got two elbows and just a short piece of pipe. You stick it into the rubber ring, and there's your your out. And on the inside, you'll have, or what we did, and we're experimenting with different heights on these, but you have an elbow going up. And the buckets I varied, uh, I have some of them that are just with the elbow, I have some with a standpipe that, that comes halfway up the bucket. And I have some that come all the way to the top, like this one right here. I need to add some gravel in this so I don't get any algae on the top of this. But, uh, yeah, this one has a standpipe right here, you can see. So this one's going to be full all the time with water. Um, these, these buckets here have the standpipe, just the elbow. And then down here we have some half buckets, we'll, which will fill half with water. <clears throat> and then... Uh, just reach the top of the standpipe, overflow and go out. So the roots of the plants can reach down and go try and you know seek out that water. Uh, we're gonna test run to see which way we like it, which which works better. As far as uh, the return goes, simple. Um, we went with a one and a half inch drain pipe. Uh, drilled half inch holes all the way down and um, just extended this drain this elbow into the pipe just a little bit just so it's dropping in nicely because we also had a problem with these being too short and overflowing onto here not making it into the hole lost our water again um, cheap roll 100 foot roll of strapping um, Attached to my you know, two by eights, two by tens, <laughs> something like that, um, and it and just it just angled it down from that end down to here, so it would just gravity flow right back, drop right back in. It's a very simple system, real easy. Pump the water in the buckets. Pump the water goes through the buckets, drains into the one and a half inch, drains back in there. Threw the fish in there and uh, threw some tomato plants in here. So that's what we've got going in here. We're going to see how this works out for us. And 
hopefully uh, we have some good results. So we'll keep you posted on this, and I'll bring you that shade cloth video real soon. So thanks for watching.